Welcome back to our lecture series, Linear Algebra Done Openly. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In section 2.6, we're going to talk about solution sets of linear systems, which admittedly we've solved many linear systems throughout this series already, so why are we finally talking about solution sets? Well, given the last two lectures we've done from the textbook 2.4 and 2.5, where we really uh, dissected the geometry of affine sets and subspaces, uh, we're starting to realize that solution sets, you know, aka affine sets, aka flats, these are geometric structures. And so we want to revisit uh, these idea of solving a solution, uh, solving a linear system with this new geometric perspective we've taken on. Now, some things to remember. So we say that a linear system is homogeneous uh, if the right-hand side of all the equations are all zero. Homogeneous here meaning that everything is of the same family, right? And so the right-hand sides of every equation in the linear system is a zero. Uh, if you have something non-zero, of course, we call it a non-homogeneous system there. Uh, homogeneous systems are always consistent because they contain the trivial solution. That is, when x is itself the zero vector, that always solves a homogeneous system. Uh, and so when it comes to homogeneous systems, consistency isn't the concern. The concern is whether it has a unique solution, the zero vector, or if it has multiple solutions. And if it has multiple solutions, then it has a non-trivial solution, that is a non-zero solution to the homogeneous system. And so again, summarizing what we've learned about homogeneous, homogeneous systems so far is that a homogeneous system AX equals zero has a non-trivial solution as something other than zero as its solution if and only if it has at least one free variable in the system. Because if you have, a, if you have any free variable, you could set that free variable equal to one and that would then create a non-trivial solution. And of course, if you have lots of free variables, you're gonna get lots and lots of solutions. And so we get multiple solutions if and only if we have a non-trivial, uh, if we have a free variable in the system, excuse me. So let's look at an example of such a thing. Let's consider the three by three linear system, three x one plus five x two plus three x three equals zero, four x one plus five x two plus four x three equals zero, and six x one plus six plus x two plus six x three equals zero. This is clearly a homogeneous system like we've seen before. And as most of our examples seem to be over the real number system, let's try something working mod seven. You notice our coefficients are only chosen as numbers between zero and six right here. Well, when it comes to solving the homogeneous system, you take our coefficient matrix and augment it with zero right here, right? So we get three, five, three, zero, four, five, four, zero, and six, one, six, zero, like, like, like we can see. And so we'd have a pivot position in the first spot right here. And so to get rid of the four that's underneath it, we're gonna take R2, subtract from it four over three, R1. Now, when you're working mod seven or modulo anything, right, we don't really want fractions in the system as much as possible. So how can we deal with this four thirds, right? So when we think of four thirds, really we should be thinking of, okay, since I'm working on seven, the numerator four can be replaced with anything congruent to four. So we could take four plus seven, uh, that would end up with being 11 thirds. That doesn't, that's not divisible by three. We can add seven one more time. We get 18 thirds right there. Oh, 18 is divisible by three. So we can reduce the fraction in that situation to be a six. And so with that, with that perspective in mind, we actually, erase the four thirds right here and we think of it as we're actually taking row two minus six times row one so we're going to get a minus four right here but then for the next one you're going to get a minus 30 and for the next one you're going to get a minus 18 and then the last one's just a zero right we'll come back to those in just a moment for the third row we need to take row two minus well, in this situation, I already know that if I take three times two in the usual sense, I can get a minus, uh, I, I can get, a, excuse me, if I take two times row one, two times three is six, that's gonna cancel out. So no fractions are necessary because I can get the usual or integer arithmetic to work out for us right here. So doing that, we're gonna get a minus six, we'll get a minus 10, we'll get a minus six again, and then finally, we're gonna give a zero right there, okay? And so now simplifying these things, we're gonna get four minus four, which is gonna be a zero for the first line. Then you're going to get 
And then you're going to get 5 minus 30, which is going to give you a negative 25, which if we add 28 to that, that gives us a positive 3, which is what we get right here. And although I wrote negative 18 earlier, notice that should just, I mean, 3 times negative 6, that's just going to give us a negative 4. And then 4 minus 4 gives us a 0 again, so that cancels out. And then you'll notice 0 minus 0 is going to be a 0. Looking at the third row, the 6s should cancel out. You're going to get 1 minus 10, which is a negative 9. If you add 7 to that, that's a negative 2. Add 7 one more time, that's a positive 5. And then you'll notice you're going to get 6 minus 6, which is 0. And then lastly, 0 minus 0, it's a 0. Nothing changed in that last column. Hmm, interesting. Uh, so then looking at the, looking at the next, the next uh, pivot, I should say here. So we have a pivot in the 2, 2 position. In that situation, we want to get rid of the 5 that's below it. But you'll notice that we have zeros, zeros, and zeros, right? So to get rid of the 5 that's below it, we're going to have to do row 3 minus 5 times 3 row 2. But as the only non-zero entry in this in row 2 is just the 3 right here, I actually don't need to simplify 5 thirds as a as a you know, as a fraction mod seven, I know this is gonna cancel out to be a zero. And this gets us a matrix in echelon form. The reason this is important is that when we reach echelon form, we can see the nature of the solution set right here. So you'll see that because there is a pivot in the first position, variable one, x1 will be a dependent variable. Because there's a pivot in the second column, x2 will be a dependent variable. But there's no pivot in the third column. And as such, this indicates that we have a free variable in our system. Now, one should also be concerned about consistency, right? But with a homogeneous system, there's never going to be a consistency problem. No contradictions will ever get here. Because even if you get a row of zeros, since the system is homogeneous, it's always going to be matched up with a zero. So no inconsistency is possible here. But we do have a free variable which tells us there's multiple solutions to this system of equations right here. So let's continue to investigate those multiple solutions here. We, and I should mention, because we have multiple solutions, because we have a free variable, there will be a non-trivial solution to this homogeneous system. Let's find such a non-trivial solution. We have to continue to solve it. So working where we left off with our echelon form, I don't want a three right there. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take one third divided by row two. And again, since there's only one non-zero entry in that row, I don't have to worry about simplifying the fraction one third mod seven. I'm just gonna get a one right here. And then we have to get rid of the five that's above it. Well, that's easy enough. Take row one minus five times row two. That'll get rid of the five giving us a zero. And then the last thing to do is, well, I need a, I need a one in this position. So again, we're gonna do one third times row one. But the only non-zero entries are actually divisible by three in the usual integer sense. So divide by three, uh, we're gonna get the following RREF we see right here where our pivots are still in the first and second columns, but we do get this non-zero entry right here that's important to pay attention to. So if we rewrite this matrix as a system of linear equations, notice what happens here. The first equation looks like x1 plus x3 equals zero. The second equation looks like x2 equals zero. And then the third equation would be zero equals zero, which we really don't even need it because it's not telling us much at all. And so we can see the exact same thing right here. And so as we try to solve for our dependent variables, because you should solve for the dependent variables, you're going to get the x1 equals negative x3. But as we're working mod 7, I'm going to rewrite that as a 6x3, because negative 1 and 6 are the same number when you work mod 7, right? And then x2 is just equal to 0, right? Now, this is, this is something that's important to realize, that a variable is dependent with meaning you cannot choose what it's going to be. Now, in terms of x1, we don't choose what x1 is going to be because it depends on the choice of x3. On the other hand, x2 is still considered a dependent variable even though it doesn't depend on x3. The thing is you don't have a choice when it comes to the dependent variable. x2 has to be zero, irrelevant of what you choose for x3. But x1 is, is very much dependent on that choice there. So if we look at the general solution for x, well, in general, we have these variables x1, x2, x3, but using the equations that we have above right here, we see that you know x3 is whatever it is, right? But then depending on that choice of x3, we're gonna see that x1 is six times x3 and x2 is zero. 
In which case, when you look at these three entries right here, you notice that all of them are divisible by x3, right? You might be wondering what about x2, but zero is just zero times x3. So each and every one of these entries has an x3 as a common factor. You can factor it out using scalar multiplication. And so our solution x3, our, x, our general solution x, is just gonna look like some multiple of x3 times the vector 6, 0, 1. This vector is pretty important here. Let's call it v. Uh, for the rest of this exercise here, 6, 0, 1. And so with V in consideration, then we've now seen that the solutions, the solutions to the system AX equals 0, this right here is just X3 times V right here, whereas X3 is kind of just some general, you know, it, it's just some number, right? We really are just taking scalar multiples of this vector V that, in fact, the solution to this homogeneous system is a line that passes through the origin, the line whose slope is determined by this, this directional slope vector v. And so, in fact, the solution set to the system is just going to be the span of the vector v, which will have the form t times v for any t that's in z7, which, as there's only seven scalars when you're working on seven, we can actually list every single solution. There's going to be multiple solutions, but in particular, there's going to be seven solutions. Um, and this is going to come from when t equals zero, you get the zero vector. When, you, when t equals one, you just get back v, six, zero, one. When t equals two, you're going to get five, zero, seven. When t equals three, you get this one. Uh, when t equals four, you get three, zero, five. When t equals uh, five itself, you get two, zero, five. I think I said that incorrectly here before. When t equals 4, you get 3, 0, 4. And when t equals 5, you get 2, 0, 5. And then lastly, when t equals 6, you're going to get 1, 0, 6. And those are the six solutions to this system of equations. You can check in each and every one of them. I'm sorry, there's seven solutions because uh, we do include the zero vector itself. And so solving a homogeneous system really comes down to this. And so the trivial solution is included here, 0, 0, 0. But then we get these six other non-trivial solutions, which come about by setting your parameter, your free variable, to something other than zero. So we found these, these non-trivial solutions to the system.